welcome back to a exclusive special of Liquid Bullet Productions. I'm Roy Vincent, and with us today is the son of gangland boxing legend Jimmy Tippett Senior. He's the author of the book Born Gangster. He is well known and respected throughout the gangland community and the fraternity. It's Jimmy Tippett Junior. Nice to see you again, boy. Thank you for coming back, no Jimmy. Worries. It's to lovely see you, to see you. Thank Absolutely you. pleasure to have you on, mate. Thanks, Roy. And what's been happening in the last couple of weeks since I've seen God, you? God, since uh, I've done the first uh, three parts with Liquid Bullets, oh, God, the work, look, I mean, I, I went off, off and done the Dodge Woodall show, which is like, he only yeah. normally does the A-listers, like Piers Morgan and uh, Harry I've Redman. seen these lists, yeah. So, yeah, so, he, I mean, because of, if he saw me on there, he sort of, and I've had sort of uh, the Sean Atwood, uh, I've had loads of major uh, sort of podcasters come out of woodwork and, and like, want me exclusive on their shows. Brilliant. And obviously, I've had a, a famous TV series, I can't say too much at the moment, but uh, no, I've been offered a, a screen testing over in Hertfordshire with a possibility to go on to a, a major TV sh soap. So uh, right, that's man. been exciting. And pages what of soap is that? Come on, re reveal. It would suit me down to the ground. Yeah. My dad always predicted I would end up on that soap. Really? So yeah, no, and it's funny enough, his predictions are coming true. So no, it's, 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 it's a possibility. So well, it's a strong possibility. So I'm, I'm looking forward to... I mean, if it happens, it happens. Yeah, definitely. But obviously, excellent. I've had so many great work offers. I've had lots of magazines come out of woodwork. That's yeah. Bible. Uh, and also with my girlfriend, she's been offered a show uh, 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 to go on Gary Bushell's show. Really? As which well. is a new show, a pilot show he's got on TV. She's going to be the glamorous assistant on there. Oh, wow. So it's, things are going in the right direction. It's really interesting. Hopefully for us as well. And I've been trying to keep up with your shenanigans like on the well, social I media. Well, my friend does uh, TikTok, and obviously we've had nearly a million views. I know, I've seen that as and well. And I'm thinking, wow, this is just like a few weeks. I know. And it's, it's just, I mean, I mean, I'm getting people come back from my past with really great work offers, and, and it's. Oh, it's changed my life completely. Well, I've been watching your stuff on social social media and like what you get up to week to week. I've been looking at all the pictures and everything else, and you make me tired by Tuesday. I know. I don't you know, know what how you do it. Have, I have, I'm, I'm all over the country. I live in London, and yeah. obviously I live up north. So, but obviously London's calling me more because obviously the work offers. Yeah. But it's just nice to go up north and escape and go around York and go to Manchester, Leeds, and have a nice time. I mean, I'm, mm. I, but I love it. London is my home. Well, I've seen you having a nice time, and we got <laughs> one of the questions we got from some of the viewers is, "Have you ever used the oven in your gaff before?" <laughs> no, <laughs> we eat out every night. It's your Honestly, I, you're I don't out like, all the time. I don't like the smell of the oven indoors, and obviously living in London with all the greatest restaurants, I mean, we 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 we're spoiled for choice. Yeah, definitely. But you do love you love your food. And oh, you I love, love my food. Out obviously, and... obviously, I've got a, there's a few TV offers with the film, and obviously, yeah. I'm working. Well, I, I, I we, we developed and started writing a cookery book, uh, Gangster and the Gorgeous Gourmet, about two years ago. But unfortunately, okay. when obviously, which I would relate to the story in Brighton, I got uh, sent to prison for four months uh, when I was set up. And uh, obviously, we had to put the book on hold, but it's something I would like to go back to because I've had a few TV offers by a well-known TV chef right. to go on to go on uh, ITV. So it's something really, really interesting in the oven, like a few things in the oven. So uh, I'll see how it pans out. Yeah, I mean, as the, um, the other book, the, uh, the <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, the other book, as you, the one with your dad, has yeah, it? I've, I've got to sit down with Julie Shaw, who's a top crime writer for the North of England. Uh, she's written 20 number one bestsellers. Oh, no, I've seen some of her stuff. It's so really so she's, she's a great character, but it's just sort of, Finding the time to sort of sit down and go through everything with her, but that's that's my number one priority with my dad's book, because I would like to donate all the proceeds and to dementia, which because my dad wasn't a greedy man, yeah. and I would like to give something back and it just sort of show people that I have changed and, and I do see things in a different direction now. That'd be really good, yeah. yeah. And I hear congratulations are in order as well. Yeah, yeah. Me and my missus are getting married. We're planning our marriage, <laughs> but no, we're looking. We're taking a, uh, a month out in January to go uh, going all yeah. around uh, Far East Asia, go to Thailand, sit like like swim with the elephants and just just you know yeah. just do some real interesting stuff and a bit spiritual. Do you want to get married abroad? Do you know something? With all the people who would probably attend, we, yeah, we 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 think we're looking yeah. at maybe going to Mauritius or somewhere like Bali and and getting married on a beautiful beach. Yeah, okay, so you are, I mean, there's a lot of people you've got to get out to that sort of other country, isn't there? Yeah, so, I mean, we're, we're pretty happy to go with another couple and, just, and do it with witnesses over there and then come back and have a party for close family and friends. That'd be a good thing, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, you're just going to make an honest man of your mate, honestly. You're, you know, you're, you're going to be able to cope with We've it. been together a year today. Funny enough, it's our anniversary today. It's mine as well, and so, I've got to say to my missus. <laughs> so we're, we're in celebrating in London tonight. No, she's, she's the best thing that's ever happened to me. She keeps yeah. me on my toes. Very similar 
a lot of people, my mum and dad's friends, have sent me messages of like congratulations and said, you really remind us of your mum and dad when they first went out. Because my dad really? was a lot older than my mum. Blimey. And my mum wore the trousers. She kept her in shape. Yeah. She she was she was the real boss. And is this what's happening here now? With oh yeah, she yeah? you you better today. So you, she she is the boss. <laughs> she's a character, mate. She, she's excellent company as well. She, well she's although she's young, people think she, she is the she is the boss between us. She 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 keeps me in my toes. So we got um the first three that we've done, uh, the first three podcasts, have hit some amazing views. Um, Can't real interesting it. stuff. Yeah. I know um, what we covered was the the sort of gangster and the underworld stuff. Yeah, dad. of course. Yeah. Um, and we've asked you to come back, or we've both agreed to come back and sort of go further yeah. with um, sort of antics that happened in Hull, is it, we're, we're going to go through? Yeah, which is, I think it's led up to a lot of things, because obviously I was in prison in 1999, and uh, obviously at the time I was, what well, I would have considered to be a prolific offender then, I was just finishing off a 10-month sentence. I just got off an a, a attempted murder charge, what happened at the Lord Homestale, yeah. and I was finishing off... Uh, it was for handling stolen goods. I think it was a ten, it was a ten month sentence for handling a stolen uh, diamond tennis bracelet, and obviously I, the police were coming into the prison then to offer prolific offenders the chance to move away because they wanted them out of the Mets uh, ground yeah, of course. and start a new life. And obviously I, I put my name down for it, and then they sort of I they, they was taking people up to Hull on a thing called the sunk step thing. It was like to change to 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 go to to move away. They'd help you with a apartment right, and get you yeah. back in a different area yeah. and hopefully you wouldn't offend Start anymore because they yeah. obviously didn't want you on their turf offending. Yeah. And obviously one of my close friends at the time, Perry Taroni, a prolific armed robber in South London, his dad was one of my dad's closest friends, uh, he had just got life sentence with a small tariff. Uh, and and I was seeing, and I just really, I'd just come out of prison and I'd really, my mum and dad were still being a bit funny with me. And I decided to take, to take them up on the offer. But then obviously I went with a few other guys from a high down prison where we was, where we was all at the time. And we got moved up to the north of England. And obviously, they, 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 they move you in, they, they set you up in a home, and you have to go onto a work scheme and bits and pieces. But I got knocked off the work scheme straight away and got told that I was cancelled. Right. So then I was going to have to come back to London. And a friend of my dad's, for my, this is how boxing spreads far and wide, a friend of my dad's I met up there called Wally May. Yeah. A friend of my dad's had boxed since the war. He offered me an apartment and sort of helped me out through my dad because I think my dad didn't really didn't want me coming back because he's in trouble. <laughs> so I ended up staying up there and I met a, I met a girl. She fell pregnant pretty pretty, pretty Sam her name was pretty straight away with my daughter Maisie. Right. Okay. But uh, I was sort of like and my mum sort of she wanted to marry me off straight away so I was out of her. Yeah, so my mum yeah, yeah. sort of put all the financial ca- uh, dangling <laughs> the financial carrots in the air. Yeah. So I ended up getting married to this girl and obviously then obviously uh, when I was in prison in the nineties Reggie Cray introduced me to a woman called Claire McDermott. Yeah. Through Linda Cowby as well, the great, uh, the Black Widow. Yeah. So me and Claire was writing throughout our times in prison, like from '96 say to '99. Then obviously one day I was reading the local paper, which was the whole Daily Mail, and I saw Claire McDermott in the paper. It was really funny, and I was reading the paper, and I thought that's Claire who I was writing to, and she she'd been uh, she'd obviously she was a lifer who'd stabbed somebody to death at really? a party, yeah, in Birmingham, and obviously. I was reading, I thought, bloody hell, so I did, she was in a prison called Ascombe Grange, which is in York, it's a, like uh, a DCAT prison, where they, they go out to work and bits and pieces. Right up north, yeah. So yeah, in York, in the most beautiful place in the country. So obviously I, started, I wrote to her, I said, oh, Claire, it's Jimmy. Straight away she wrote back, she went, oh, would you like to come and visit me? Lovely. And my marriage wasn't really, I wasn't, to be honest with you, I wasn't in love. Right. It, it, it was... It, it does was, help, doesn't it? it my mum, she felt pregnant. My mum was one of these old school people. You can't have a baby out of wedlock and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and I think yeah. my mum just wanted to see me married off and out of... And I out, was and, in and, them and, days, and, out of, and out of her hands, basically. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, on, and obviously, I was living in a new area. Hull is a, a very strange place. It's uh, it's like the arsehole, they call it, because there's no it's one way in and one way out. It's not oh, a yeah. very... Yeah, it's not, it wasn't it, a very yeah. nice place. It's I've, I've got some very good friends up there, but I, I made a lot of bad... Bad people up there as well. Really, a lot of because remember that we're born and bred Londoners, boy. So yeah, up yeah. there, they're different way, different mindset. Different, yeah, of course they are. I mean, look, they all they all they all dress like rappers with big gold chains and think they're something special. It is, but in reality, they they, they were yeah. very cheap and very. They get mugged in two minutes. No, in the London, Northerners, and the, yeah. uh, in Leeds and Manchester, are big cities, and Liverpool, you got you got yeah. the, the people a bit more stylish. They have got a bit more about them and a bit yeah. more, I'd say, a bit more loyal. In Hull, it's a strange old place. Yeah, I've never it, been. It's like there's something in the water there. But no, I met what? some good people up there, like Tony Booth, the boxer. Very yeah. good, very good journeyman, Tony. I'm really good friends with Tony to this day. I met some other good friends, Nick Hammond, really nice friend, friend of mine, Dean Santos, really nice guy. But uh, there was a lot of a lot of wannabes and Mickey Mouse merchants. I'd call them up. They all thought yeah, they were yeah, yeah. a bit special. But I, I never, I never back down from a fight and always right. come out on top until obviously I got done for uh, an attempted murder up there. 
but yeah, getting back to the marriage, uh, yeah, we got married and I saw it so Claire wrote back to me straight away. Yeah. And obviously I went up to see her one, one, one Saturday afternoon. My friend Phil, good friend of mine, Phil Hunt, he's like a driver for me in bits and pieces. He's been a good friend of mine 20 odd years now. But we, we drove up to the prison. He, he was a chauffeur. So we had a seven series BMW. He's driven me in through the gates at Ascombe Grange. It's like a big mansion in York. And all the girls are screaming at the window. And it's like, oh, it's it quite a surreal experience. So I went in to see Claire. We got on really, really well. And it was like, I don't know, it's because I wasn't happy in my marriage. But I was a bit like, I, I, I was doing something wrong, which has always been exciting for yeah, me. Yeah, of course. So I, we, after, leaving, after leaving the prison that day, I thought, oh, I was, I mean, mine was all over. So uh, obviously, when I went back home, I was like, my wife went, where have you been? I went, oh, I've been shopping with Phil to the York retail outlet and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, we, and uh, then Monday morning, there was a knock at the door. And I noticed there was a police car outside. I thought, fucking hell, what's going on here? Yeah. So it was like, Mr. Tippett, can we have a word? And my missus had come down straight away, low like listening to what's going on. Of they course, went, yeah. and, I, and I thought, I hadn't done nothing wrong, so I didn't think, to, I didn't think it was anything yeah, to do with the prison. They went, oh, Mr. Tippett, yeah. you was visiting Claire McDermott, a lifer in uh, Ascom Grange Prison on Saturday. And I, there was a woman found, uh, a Chinese woman was found dead in, and like bundled up in a suitcase, a small Filipino lady. And they want to pin that on you? No, 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 no. But they, found, they everyone who had been in that, oh, like, the see, prison that yeah, day, yeah, yeah. they found the, the, the body in a, in a, in a lay by, uh, in, in a lane. Yeah. So I went, no. And I said, oh, no. They said, did you see anything? It wasn't, they just literally, it was just like, they're just asking routine questions. But because I, I didn't think I was going to ask about the prison, my missus went, who are you visiting in prison? And next thing you know, the police went, oh, he's visiting Claire McDermott. So my missus mm. is then like, she's found something, and a letter come through the post, she's oh, yeah. got the letter, opened yeah. it up. And there was then, she's ended up uh, leaving me, and uh, the, 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 the Daily Mail, the Mirror, James Weatherup, a news reporter, has put Cray Pow in love with Killer. No. So it's all in the Sunday newspaper. So there was a big row with her dad. Her dad was an absolute arsehole. He come round, got a bit clever, soon put in his place. Yeah. But then that was it. That was it. The marriage was over. But yeah. then obviously the, the, the Sunday people then followed stories up, the same as the news of the world. Yeah, cool. And obviously they started getting known in the press. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I ended up moving in with my friend Phil, like living the bachelor lifestyle again, which I much preferred. Yeah. And we started going to lap dancing clubs. This was like around 2000. So uh, yeah. it wasn't long before I was barred from every lap dancing club for knocking the doorman out or having a row with the doorman. <laughs> and I was on bail for two Section 18s at a, a Shapes nightclub. Yeah. And then, no, I was getting involved in all sorts up in the hole. It was like, it was like, it was like being reinvented myself in, 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 in crime. But it was like, I'd met the wrong people up there. You know, like, a lot of arseholes, to be honest with you. Yeah, one they're of not, They're not like, the, there is that North-South divide. Yeah, yeah, of course. And obviously, is. the South, I've always think, is a bit more glamorous. And, and the Londoners do it a little, a little bit better. Who's interested in an urban crime story? Well, this is it, yeah. Unless it's Liverpool or Manchester. Which is the main sort of place? Yeah, the main, yeah. yeah, they're, they're yeah all known, no it? one's yeah. interested in fucking yeah. your a hole. Hole is like the backward <laughs> fucking town. Yeah, I only ever heard a hole that was on Only Fools and Horses. Yeah, know, yeah, it's a hole, hole back. <laughs> this is why I said this would be a good thing for this. Yeah. But no, I, I met some. I met some good guys up there. But yeah. um, on the other hand, I met a lot of wrong guys. So yeah, I started uh, messing about up there, and then uh, I got involved in a bit of trouble one night. Did I you had, get involved with the wrong guys up there again? The wrong guys were no good. Remember, I'm thinking everyone's staunch like us down there. When they're, yeah, when they're not, yeah, they're, right, these so. people are like they're not. London is Londoners are Londoners. Yeah, they're on their own. Up yeah, there, you know, but whole, I don't know, I've got a lot of Northern friends from Newcastle, good players. I've got a lot of good people in York, in Leeds, and Middlesbrough, really good people. Yeah. But Hull was just that shitty ass place. It is just, I mean, it's the, it's where they fold the refugees now. It's, really? Yeah. Yes, it's, uh, it's, but I've got some good friends. I've got some good friends. Ash up there, a really nice friend of mine. He's he done a lot of prison up there. He's turned his life around. Yeah. And I met some really good people. But it's, then I had, I had a bit of trouble one night with this guy, Paul. I mean, I can I, I ain't got to mention his surname, but uh, no, no. we ended up having a bit of a ruck. Yeah, they we ended up having a big ruck one night. I he was like, he used to drive a Ferrari and blow me on the number plate. No. So, uh, but before that, what had happened was a guy called Tony Thompson, the best selling crime writer, yeah. he wrote a book uh, called Gangs, A Journey into the uh, Heart of the British Underworld. And he okay. featured me as one of the main people in the book, which then got me a bit of notoriety. And he featured me and some guys from Hull uh, in the Observer newspaper in a great big article which was like my downfall, basically. They yeah. said, uh, Hull is Britain's new drug capital. Really? Former arm robber Jimmy Tippett Jr. Blah, has become friends with these people in Hull. And then the local paper started referring to us as mafia men. So it was on you straight but away. But at the time, uh, Humberside Police had set uh, a unit to follow my, up, my, follow my daily routine. Wow. Because of this, obviously, it had a lot of a uh, bad effect on Hull, because Hull's got a bad enough bloody name as it is without what went on in the newspapers. Yeah. So obviously they was I wasn't doing I wasn't doing fantastic up there. That's a funny thing. I was seeing a lap dancer up there. I was 
just just living a shit. It was, it was a drug drug induced lifestyle, really. Going yeah. out partying, living one day to the next. I wasn't really putting any foundations down. No. And obviously the newspaper story come out, and I was going out partying. Then I got involved in a fight one night. I, it was, it was, I met this nutcase girl, absolute lunatic. And then uh, she ended up kicking off at the party. This guy come steaming into me. And he's, he had me in a headlock. And I remember there was a knife on the side. And I'm not a knife merchant, but I've, I've been known to use him in self-defence. But uh, I grabbed this knife and I sort of tried to get him off me, like cut him on the face a few times, several times the police say. Yeah. But then I stabbed him in the side. Now I'm thinking, just because he was strangling me, I couldn't breathe, boy. Yeah. So I've stabbed him in the side, and only once, but where he's, he's got, he's still fighting. So I've picked the cooker grate up, you know, the, 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 the cast iron bit. Yeah. I whacked him, whacked him a couple of times right. But what I've done is I've, where it's got the hooks on it, where you put the, the stove on, it's caught my own head, and it's bloody. Oh. Well, I look round, he's oh, on the right. floor. But I did, the girl was behind me, she'd been it, she was on the floor. There was blood all everywhere. It was like a proper crime scene. I was like, yeah. fuck. So I remember running downstairs, and it was like, I don't know, I just found a knife on the floor, because I didn't, I, I didn't do nothing wrong. Got a taxi back home where I was living in Beverly, which is where the race course is. Got a change of, change of clothes, and I remember I was seeing a TV producer woman on the side yeah. from York, who run York TV, uh, this woman, Dawn. And uh, she took me back to London, and I, she put me up in the Bayswater Hotel. Next thing you know, I was getting phone calls on the way down there, saying, listen, he's, 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 he's just died on the operating table they've just brought him back to life he's no not shit. looking good and i was like a bit of delayed concussion where i did myself so many times with this cooker thing yeah. i was like i was being sick having to stop the car being sick on the m1 and i was shit myself i thought fucking i'm gonna be done for murder here yeah and when we got back to the hotel i was literally i was me ever spinning because i thought he was on the operating table he was he was being like what happened was where i bur stabbed him it burst his bowel right, so okay. basically yeah. he's 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 his, his shit's coming out of his sack and into his stomach and it's like poisoning him he's, and he's died. They've had to open him up from the front right upwards. I think it's like 200 stitches. They've had to open him right up. Oh, and I'm sitting there and my mate was obviously, he's not really a mate, but winding me up saying he's, he's dead. He doesn't think he's going to make it and all that. Now I'm spinning. It was like saying out of like look stock and I was like, my head was spinning all over. I was thinking, yeah. fuck, I'm going to go away from prison for life now. Of course, yeah. So now I'm officially wanted for attempted murder. Now, and I was due to go to court for two section 18s on a doorman at Shapes Nightclub. As well. As well as that, yeah. So I'm on bail for that. So now I can't turn up at the court because I now wanted for attempted murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I phoned my brief up, uh, Paul Robinson in London, famous brief, and I went, Paul, what's it? He went, it's L plates, Jim. I went, what do you mean? He went, well, it's a section 18 within 10, and you're on two section 18s anyway. You're, you're looking at L plates, Jim. I went, what do you mean? He went, looking at L plates with a small tariff. I went, I went, what do you mean? Went, but they, they, they're doing this IPP at the moment, indeterminate public, public protection sentence. Yeah, yeah. And I think he said, I said, what's the thing to do? He went, well, you need to go and get your injuries because I was, a lot of injuries. He said, you need to get, take photographs of your injuries. He said, but I can't advise you to stay on the run. He said, I'm advising you to hand yourself in. Yeah, yeah. He's got so I was like, in, fuck, so now I'm, now, I'm, now I'm on the run. Boy, and I'm sitting there thinking, as well, you as well as, yeah, yes. so fight, fight it, here, it, it? It, it was madness because I'm lucky I had a very, very rich nan who I used to go and visit the nursing home. She would give me like open, like blank checks. I'd just go and cash them up. Yeah. And I was living with my cousin down in London. But now my mum realised I'd been to see her mum in the, in the nurse, somebody's nursing home. And now she had the um, and because we'd been all friendly to this stage. Now she had the um, I'm on the run. The, the police were going to her regularly looking for me because oh, I wanted no. for a section, I'm working for yeah, the attempted murder in two section 18s. So I was eight months on the run, and then I was living Finally. with a girl in Surrey, and I remember it was the 29th of December, 2004. We've heard, I've heard, knock, knock, knock at the door. Oh, police, get on the floor. So I'd run upstairs like a lunatic, hid under the uh, son's bed, but put like a, a spare mattress under me. Like, I remember the, yeah, the police come through the front window. That's how serious they were concerned. Really? Because they yeah, said they, they looked the other day. They come through the front window. Yeah. Like, you're talking double glazing windows. They come through, <laughs> smashing through the windows. <laughs> yeah. Oh, police, uh, remember to search under all beds. All beds are hollow. I thought, it's like they already, I think she, the girl had already tipped them off. I was under the bed. Yeah. She, they come up. I remember smash with the rifle again. It's like, it seems to be their little trick with me. It's to, it's to disorientate you. Arrested me on the section eight, two section 18s. Said that the family had to turn up at court. About the blah, blah, blah. And the attempted murder on blah, blah, blah. And they took me off. They they pulled up on the motorway in Surrey to get a... Uh, to get me security tested, you know, so obviously they, they, they deem me to be a danger to the public, so then they got to sit yeah. there to get, to know to which police station, they took me to high security stage police station, got there and it was like, the police said, listen, we've been after you for so and so, uh, they'd done a crime watch program on me, someone, really? rec someone recognised me in, in Epsom in Surrey, Are you I was with Jimmy White, no snooker way. player one day, having a drink, yeah. and they'd recognised me, tipped them off, 
they'd followed me in oh, some my. pub in Epsom, followed us back, and was that's how they caught Anya. me. No, oh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so I was nicked, and they had me up to whole jail, whole whole courts. I was in a whole jail on New Year's Eve. Oh, terrible! All the police are coming through, looking like they caught the Robin Hood. It was yeah. terrible. But they uh, yeah. they lifted the hatch, come through. They went. Uh, you got caught in the morning, went to court, tried every little move in the book to try and get bailed. Yeah, she won't. Yeah, it was a New Year's Day, <laughs> 2005, that no, remanded to whole jail, where it was like, oh, I remember it was it was terrible. It was like it was like the jail, which it was an old Victorian jail on Headham right. Road, and I was in there. Next thing you know, the police are coming up to me with a few more charges and say on an ABH on a driver, which one of the guys who I'd been done for the attempted murder tried to set me up on another charge. That's how. No. That's how low life the guy yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I ended up so I ended up spending some time there and then I had a fight in there with some guys. I remember queuing up to get some jeans one day and a guy went to me, sorry, mate, uh, yeah, cop me, get to the back of the queue. I went, I get to the fucking back of the queue, you prick. I said, listen, he went, oh, in the fucking showers, in the showers. I went, fucking in the showers, sweet. He went, me and my brother, we come as a team. I went, ping, ping, knock the two of them, spark no out. No way, really? Then, 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 <laughs> then, they went, then the next morning, they went, tip it, oh, you're at court, Leeds Crown Court. I went, no, I'm at whole Crown Court. I went, no, it's been changed because of the, wit the witness doesn't want to do it in the whole Crown Court. Oh, so no they way. got me down reception, but I went, I want me photos and me, me clothes. I didn't have a lot, but I wanted things. Then they went, nah. So then they went, oh. I said, I'm not going, I'm refusing to go. So with that, they've got everyone else out the out the holding room for the court, and then they've sent twelve of the biggest screws, and they was all big lumps here, all ex rugby players. Yeah. And they've all come marching in, and obviously I've got no I, 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 Listen, as much as I thought, uh, <laughs> listen, they had me on the floor and bundled up in ten yeah. seconds, but I was out of breath, <laughs> and it was like then I was all I had all ble bleeding, and then the lady on the group four security van refused to take me. She said he's bleeding and needs uh, needs attention. Needs attention. Yeah. So they said then the next day they took me to Leeds. Crown Court. They, they wanted me out. They wanted physically. I was chucked out of whole jail. They said well, you're yeah. a, you're a menace and a nuisance in whole jail. We want you out. Really. So I was remanded the next day into army prison in Leeds, which was like, oh, it was like I met some I met some great characters. To this day, I'm really good friends with. So proper regimented in there though. Was oh, same it's, thing, yeah, though. It's it, but you, yeah. you start off in this little a unit in Armley and then you move up to D wing and it's like four landings and it's an absolute cesspit of a jail. It's, it, but yeah. it was like it was the time and then all of a sudden one time they removed me back to Hull by accident and it's they, they didn't want me so they had me in the whole they had like an induction unit right. so they got me in the induction unit and a, a kid in my cell cut his wrist but he, so he's cut him downwards which is where you're meant to do them yeah. there's blood all over the floor so i've jumped off the top deck top top top, top deck of the, of the bunk bed i've wrapped his wrapped his wrapped his wrist and i'm knocking on the door going excuse me uh miss 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 calling the officer she's going tippy you're not having a phone call i mean this is a guy bleeding to death in here and she refused she, she didn't come it. so yeah. i'm having to die tie this kid's uh wrist and i'm old and i'm tying knots and it and it saved him next really? thing you know and he went tippy what's all that so he's coming he went fucking hell he's bloody me he's on the emergency buzzer with that the governor of the prison has come up he went tip it he's pulled me to the side he went he said, I'm going to tell you thing. the truth. You was being remar you was being sent back to army tomorrow. You were but you was being then, you was gonna be sent to Moorlands, which is an absolute shithole with jail in Doncaster. Yeah. He said, I'm gonna tell you now, you're quick thinking and you saved this inmate's life. He oh, said yeah, he course. said the prison officer, the woman was bright red, she was like he said, You you've been a nuisance this jail with Timmy. He said, But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you choose fifty pounds worth of canteen, which which is like Lovely. that's like a brilliant. He said, and yeah. I'm gonna move you to a good jail, it's called the Wolds. Oh, nice. And it was between Wolds and Everfall in Brup. But they called it the Disney Wolds at the time. Because it was, you go yeah. in there, you get a loaf of bread, fried breakfast every weekend. No it was your own, your own key to your, <laughs> to your door. They had, a boxing, they had the boxing bags in the gym there. Oh, my God. And it was like, he said, but you, Tim, you was, on a bad, you was on a bad route. Because of your quick thing you've today, I'm going to put a saint next to your name, which is on your prison file, which is a yeah. like, recommendation. Yeah, you yeah, you, yeah. you saved someone's life. So with that, I got sent straight to the Wolds, which was nice. like, there was, a, there was a few people from Hull there who were a little bit wary of me there because obviously there was a few Londoners there. But your name gets there before you do, do you know Of course it did. When yeah. I got there, I went, what's his channel? Went, it was quiet until you turned up. <laughs> and then uh, I got with a little crew of Londoners, Damo and a guy called Jerry the Bear, who was a friend of Charles Bonson's. And he, what he was, Jerry, had, like, he'd been done 26 years for a life sentence. Uh, he killed an antique dealer in, Black, in uh, Blackheath. And we become really good friends. He was like a man mountain. Like, and that's why I called him Jerry the Bear. But we, yeah. we, I put a few uh, things right in there with a few people from Hull. And look, we was known as like the untouchables in there. Right, so we was bowling yeah, around doing, doing what we wanted to do. <laughs> and uh, it was quite good. But then I had a guy called Dean Langton. He looked like a Thunderbird puppet. You know, like one of those expressionless yeah. fucking things yeah, on the yeah. street. And uh, he pulled me to the office one day. He said, look, I'm the security 
governor here. He said, you don't run this go the jail tippet, we do. Mm. He said, and Elliot, he said, within a few days, there was four or five of us here, that, that person off to a prison, that person off to another prison, and left me alone. It sounds like a script from Scum, doesn't it? it, it do you know what I say? It was a time of my life which was like, how is one of those things? It was, it was listen, I, I, my, my ex-wife, well, we've never spoken since. Mm. I've since sort of spoke to my daughter, but to be honest, I, and I shouldn't really say this, I mean, I'm on this, when my mum died, we was talking, she then started coming out with a, uh, like that she had cancer. This is my daughter, she's 20, 20 years old, 21 years old. Right. And then, obviously, when my mum died, my mum left me a lot of money, and my daughter sort of asked for some money one day, and I went, yeah, yeah, and then she went, I'm with my nana shopping. I went, but you couldn't come down and see your nana when she was dying of cancer for a year. Yeah. How can I give you some of my, my mum, your nana's money, when you didn't make the effort to come down and see her, but you're with your nana now, Ask your nana now to give you some money. Yeah. And she went, wow, well, wow, well, so you promised it. I said, no, do you know what it is? It's called tough love. Yeah. If you only want to see me for money, I'm not interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's and then right, she started yeah, making yeah. snide remarks about my girlfriend, who, who, who to me has done more to me. You've met her, boy. Yeah. She's not, everyone thinks yeah. she's the gold digger. She's never been a gold digger. She's the one with the gold. She's, she's got more money than me. Yeah, yeah, she has more, she, she paid the bar tab. Yeah, listen, listen <laughs> she's got more money than me. And it's not that she's looked after me when I had nothing. Yeah. So we, we were a good little team. And no, I, no one, I would never let anyone call my girlfriend. So mm. unfortunately, I chose my girlfriend over my daughter. And I've got no qualms about that. Okay. After what she actually trapped my mum, wouldn't come and see my. She, when my mum was dying of cancer, she went, oh, I've got a tattoo done, banana. I went, How much was that? She went, 120 quid. I went, Well, why didn't you spend 120 quid and come down on a train ticket? Well, I'd have bought you the train ticket and come and see your nana. Yeah. My mum was the most generous lady you could ever meet and yeah. the most lovely lady. But when she was dying of cancer, it made me rethink my life. She would have paid for the train ticket, wouldn't she? She Just, would have done, but yeah, my mum yeah. would have given anyone anything. And I, to see my mum go through what she did in a year completely changed me as a person. Yeah. I'm a totally different person where I was a horrible person uh, uh, during my worst periods in drugs. But seeing my mum say about working hard and, and, and you only get what you get out of life, uh, what you, what you work in. for, having to pay that big pocket fine, has taught me a valuable lesson. Yeah. I might be 51 now, but it's finally... Sunk in. It's sunk in. Yeah, yeah. It took a little while. And obviously, it? I mean, if my mum and dad were looking down now, they they would be proud because I, I I'm doing every, on a daily basis. I try and do as much as I can in a day. After doing the first podcast with you, so many incredible opportunities have come out of the woodwork. Same for and us. Obviously, yeah. obviously, liquid bullets now will always be a major thing. And it's funny we both come from the same area. Yeah, have yeah. changed my life. We've known a lot of the same yeah. people, but we've never met. I was telling this to Paige no. earlier. We yeah. got thirty-seven uh, connected friends on Facebook. Come in the same area, drunk in the same pubs, but we have somehow passed. Yeah, and obviously Johnny Lister and Paul Stokes are two very close friends of mine. Yeah. Who, 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 who are the main them. governors of Bromley. Yeah, we all grew yeah. up with them. And friends passed, dads, yeah. But obviously yeah. Things, things go round in a different... You meet... I mean, I've met so many good people now in my life. Yeah. And obviously I put Hull as... It's a learning experience. It was, a, it was a shit time in my life, but it was a learning experience. So you'd never go back? I, do you know something? I went up to Hull the other day and it's just like... It's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like worse than Penge. Really? That's so I was with a friend yeah. of mine from Coronation Street the other day. He used to live in he used to live in Penge with Gary Webster out of Winder. <laughs> yeah. And it, and Penge is like it's a Ponge, yeah. Ponge, yeah. Like, yeah. But Hull is like the arsehole of nowhere. Really? Leeds, Manchester, Liverpool, lovely places up north. Uh, York, my, one of the most beautiful places. That's my dream place. But no, Hull is uh is is is, is scum of the earth. So how long was you there? I was there two thousand, two thousand one, two thousand two. 2003, and in, I believe it was January, February, March, like, it was April, I think it was April the 4th, I'd got, uh, I'd done uh, what they said, the attempted murder, yeah. then I was on the run until December, I got caught, but on that time, I remember, it was, it was so funny, we went to Margate one day, and uh, I was with a friend of mine, uh, Patrick Murray, he mm. played Mickey Pierce in Only Falls and Aussies. You're joking, and we you know like, him. And I was with oh, another mate. colour of my Mickey Goldtooth, and we called it like, it was like the Jolly Boys out in, but I was on the run. And I remember oh at times, it was, we had some, but I had some great times on the run, better times on the run than I did in the hole. Were well, you riding away as well? It's yeah, but like obviously, COVID, obviously yeah. coming out, obviously, so I got sentenced. Eventually, I got sentenced for that. Uh, I got I got two not guilties. Where did they catch you? They caught me in Epsom, West York. And that's, oh, is that when they come that, and got you? That's when, when the armed police come and got me. There was right, and that was police. the time they actually they caught you They threw the stun that. grenades through the window. Yeah, yeah, so I got caught on the 29th okay. of December, 2004. I got released, so, I, so obviously I went through, I, I just see, uh, they were trying to get me an IPP, which is an indeterminate public protection sentence, yeah, yeah. but I ended up getting, a, I got 34 months. What happened was, on the day that he was meant to show up, this guy, Paul, who I'd stabbed, they said that, uh, would I go, they, I, I was going not guilty on it, so I was going not guilty, so the, the Crown Prosecution Service come back and said, if I go guilty, 
to a section 20, which was uh, one under section 18, with it, with, a, with it written into the charge that it was an excessive form of self-defence, yeah. they would give me 15 months. Right, okay. So when I spoke to my lawyer, he said to me, yeah, you got, listen, if you risk running a, a trial, you're going to be found guilty of section 18 of intent. Remember, you're a cockney with a northern jury. Yeah. I'd yeah. just been found guilty. I'd just been found, this funny enough, a few weeks before I went up on the two section 18s. Yeah. I got found not guilty of the two section 18s. Really? But yeah, oh, it was the greatest thing. I'll be willing, I remember the jury, they were all like, from like, they were just normal working class people. They're going, all right, all right. I've won them over a little bit. I remember tripping yeah. up on the way to, the, to give evidence <laughs> and like, I had my glass, I mean, fucking Specsavers glasses on me, shirt, hanging out my jumper, shirt yeah. collar. And it was like, I won them over. And then uh, what happened was they found me guilty of an affray which they had on CCTV, right. but I wasn't there that night. But they, they were showing CCTV of another night, but I just got up and was talking to another table. But they found me guilty of something I've not even done. They found me not guilty of something I'd, I'd done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, but then what they done is, on, so they give me 18 months for the non-violent affray, non-violent affray, 18 months, but they, mm. had, they added the 15 months for the Section 20 on top as a consecutive right, rather okay. than one concurrent. Yeah. So it's a 34 month total sentence. Right, okay. It's so bad though. What so yeah, but what happened was they put me, I didn't realise they put a mapper on me, which is called multi agency public protection arrangement. Right. So okay. basically they still consider me to be a danger to the public. So when I was out on license, I still had to, uh, they had to have uh, weekly meetings with social services. You got to sign uh, in somewhere. The, and all the that. psychologist, yeah, the, yeah. The, pri the, 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 the prison, the police, and the probation service. Yeah. So when I got out, I remember I'd had, a, I'd had a ruck this particular day. It was on the 6th of the 6th of the 6th. No, 666. I'll stop I it. called it in my book, Devil <laughs> Sentence. And I got arrested <laughs> yeah. for two Section 18s. Yeah. Which, because I was on a mapper, I was potentially looking at another life sentence. Yeah, it down, been, to, yeah. down to someone's lives. So yeah. I eventually went to prison and uh, I got not guilty. Got not got got not guilty again. But they, I had to wait for the parole board. And I got released another eight months later. So I ended up doing the majority of that thirty-four month sentence because yeah. I got recalled again and had to do another seven months. So I ended up in Wandsworth, which is an absolute shitty jail. Yeah. And then one day I ended up, I said I wanted to see me daughter, like the whole bullshit. And I got moved up to Doncaster, which was a oh brilliant nick. You had punching bags on every wing. You was out your cell all day. You could oh you had Lovely, the right yeah. choice of food. Yeah. And in Wandsworth, it was just an absolute carsey. Well, yeah. Yeah. So no, then, then that obviously, then I got out, and then obviously I moved back to London, and sort of I end up getting with a girl uh, who played Justine Dean in Grand Jill. Grand Jill. She, uh, Rachel Roberts. Mm. She was the longest running cast member. We yeah. got engaged in St Lucia, and we had a great three and a half years together. We was a, uh, she had an interesting story, but it was a, uh, it was mad because uh, her dad got murdered the day she started Grand Jill. Very like Eddie Roberts, he got shot dead in the bank in How Croydon. How did she carry on? And she she carried on, so she ended up being the longest running cast member and like the the, the best looking girl in Grand Jill. And yeah, uh, I used to yeah. I used to love her back in when she was in Grand Jill. And the dynamics of things, I think mm. you and we got together. She fell madly in love with me, and I fell madly in love with her. And we we had the, we had the best times ever. We went all we went everywhere together. And uh, no, we lived in a beautiful house in West Wickham. And then obviously I went to see a medium when she was in America. And she said she had demonic forces following her. And I got into this spiritual stuff. Really? And this medium told me stuff, which only... Sh she she was bringing know. out stuff for my nan. Me and my nan had a password. My nan said, right. when I die, do you always come and visit you as a ghost? I went, oh, don't be silly, nan. No. Uh, she said, well, look, go to a medium and we have a password. And yeah. that password's Ruby, because she used to wear a Ruby ring okay. and a Ruby necklace. She never called that up, surely. No, the medium went, listen, uh, Jimmy, I've got, I've got someone here. And she's, her face sort of distorted and turned into like a chubby lady with these mad glasses. Well, my nan used to wear these like mad glasses with like eyebrows on. Yeah. And she went, I've got your nanny. She like said, a bit of Dame Edna. Yeah, Dame Edna. Do you remember like the ticks on the glasses? Yeah. And she said, oh, my name was always, she had a full makeup, full face of makeup at six o'clock in the morning. My nan, first one up, you know, a little pin, pinny and all that. And she said, I've got your nanny, Maldi, Mald, Mald. Uh, she said she enjoyed the cups of tea and talking about your dad. And she, because my dad was a, she loved it. My dad and his sister Julie, lovely people, best best people. In, 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 she had the, my dad had the best family ever. Him and his sister were treat like kings and queens by them, by their yeah. mum and dad. They had the best family, very very strong. And uh, yeah, so she was like, she was like, oh, I've got to tell you, you need to get away from this relationship. I see you in the back of a hearse through a knife knife attack by really? Rachel. I said what? But Rachel was like, really, <coughs> she said, when you go back home, you're going to find like, you need to have a little look and start, and things are all going to become clear. When I went home, I opened the laundry basket, started going through, found like a, half a bottle of vodka. Wow. Rachel had been a secret alcoholic and I didn't even know. No. And it was like everything. So with this and what she said, one day Rachel was in America with the kids and I, and I looked in the corner of the room, there's a shadow. And when I got up, the shadow didn't move. Then it moved a different direction. 
Right. I phoned the medium up. She said it was her dad. He okay. didn't want me in the house. Mm. With all this, it fucking sent me like, she said, Jimmy, you need to take my advice. You two have an invisible thread. You need to cut this and separate. But going back to the medium, did she mention the ruby? She said this. Well, she said, she said, Jimmy, I've got something to say. Your nan's telling me, is it okay to say it? You've both got a password, I believe. And I went, yeah. Nah. She went, how about if I was to say to you that password is ruby? What would oh you say? Oh, my God. What With did that, you my do legs then? like yeah. jelly. My hair's on the back of my leg went up. And I remember just crying, and I was like, "Well, that's it. She's there. It's just there. It's I was true, overwhelmed it? with what, with what, with what I'd been told. I was like, "Wow, how, how do they do that?" And it's like, so now everything. What she told me, I went back to the house, yeah. and there was a lot of. St I mean, I found. I went into the loft. I shouldn't have looked in there. But you got to listen now, aren't you? Rachel you had an aware. affair with uh, John Leslie. Do you remember the, yes, the TV yes, presenter yeah. on? Uh, and I remember Rachel was saying, "Sick of me a little bit." I said about he'd been involved in that attack on Eureka Johnson. And uh, Rachel said say and I went, she went, no, she just didn't like it rough. And I thought, what? Yeah. And then I started disliking her, you know? I thought, I don't like the way you're talking. You're talking mm. like slag. And all of a sudden I started, it was all, and then I believed everything the medium told me. So we separated. Right. We started going back here and there, which you do as, yeah, when you yeah, first yeah. split up. But then I met a lovely girl, Jackie, and we, she, she, become, she just fitted in with my family straight away and become one of the family. And obviously, to this day, we're really close friends. And she looked after my mum and dad till they died. And she was like a big, big, big part of my family. But going, going back, this was all after Hull. What, what else did happen in Hull that in, you, in a, you've sort of made you want to get out of that area? Do you know what it was? It wasn't like London. It, there was no good restaurants there, for starters. Right. I wasn't earning the money or my capabilities of what I'd been around. Yeah. I've been around people like Danny Roth, like the, the big hitman who got shot dead. Do you remember he got shot dead in Wanstead yeah. Road, Bromley? He got shot yeah. dead in 96, I believe. That's right. Or, or 97, there, when they come it? in, they, they, he was already in a wheelchair from when he got shot in New Cross. Right. And he got, they shot him in the back, some people in uh, London, shot him in the back. And Danny had killed Charlie Wilson, the great train robber yeah, the train in robber. Spain. Yeah. Danny was a well-known hitman and armed robber, but I got on really well with Danny. And Danny was in a wheelchair. He was getting out of his Mercedes. He had a C180, a blue one. And he was getting out, and the van pulled up with two guys, and they unloaded two revolvers in him. Blimey. But they considered him still to be a danger in his wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. it shows you when you're... It's, it's, it? And uh, Danny, he didn't move. He wasn't scared of anyone, even in a wheelchair. But I'd seen then, then Perry got the life sentence, and then other friends of mine would, just got nicked on a big, big drugs thing. And I just withhold... There was no real characters there who excite. I need to be around excitement and a yeah. bit of like danger, and there was no one there to do that. I mean, I'd upset a few people. I'd had a few rows. I'd never lost up there. Never you lost. You don't know anyone, or you're treading on toes, sort of thing. You got to be yeah, really careful. Yeah, I didn't give a area. fuck to be honest with you. Right. They're killing people now in London for doing that. I, they? I, yeah, but up there, I, I'd done what I wanted to do. I didn't right. fear no one. I bashed anyone who was anyone up there. It was. Uh, and I'm not, and I'm not the strongest, but I also had some heavy people around me if I needed to call on them people. Yeah. I've got to this day, which I've got those, you know, those same people. But it's no, I, I had some bad experiences up there go going wrong. I got him. We, I, I mean, I met some good people up there. We had some like crazy little times up there. We went to Blackpool. We went to see Joe Longford, who was a friend of mine's uncle. And he, no, we had some good times there. It was a nice place. Sounds like it as well. So it actually uh, in times, but it wasn't the place for me because it was, it was. It, there was nice times, and there were some nice places in Hull. I shouldn't slag it off that badly, but it was the arsehole of nowhere. It's, it, I think the prison sentence up there, when I went back after going to prison, it, it didn't have that same... Yeah. There's some lovely girls up there. There's some, but I had some good friends there, but the majority, they're not like, they're not like Londoners. No, 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 but you couldn't operate up there. And I've got friends in Leeds, Manchester and Liverpool who are the most staunchest people in the world who have your back. Yeah. And, 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 but Hull, there's no loyalty. Like, like, no, but what I'm saying is, up in Hull, um, you, obviously, they're, they're trying to do what you wanted to do up there. Was it more difficult than doing it in London? To be honest, a lot of people come away to sell drugs up there because it's a sort of, it's got bad red light districts up there, right. bad crack and heroin problem up there. So the geezers up there who thought they were something special was involved in the crack and the heroin, which has never been my scene. They're, they're, yeah. they're considered dirty drugs, dirty scum people do, do, do all that, in my eyes. Well, they can't do a lot anyway, can no, they? No, really? and that's sort of, you know, with the likes, the people I've been with were like big, big coke barons or big, big in the cannabis game. They, mm. they, they, would, they would look down on anyone who'd done that crack and heroin. That, yeah. was, a, that was a low life drug. Yeah. And uh, no, I, I experienced a lot of things up there, but it's obviously, I was involved, I was getting involved in fighting all the time and going out partying. 
and it, I was putting myself, I got myself out of it. I was too, I mean, I turned up there, it was like Joe Pesky in Casino when, uh, when uh, Ace says to him, oh, look, you turned up next thing you know, he's blackballed, blackballed from every oh, casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like a, a one man tidal wave up there who calls fucking Havoc and Mayhem everywhere he went. Yeah. It was like I was barred from everywhere. No one wanted to let me in. I was the lunatic cockney <laughs> and, who, who calls trouble and Mayhem everywhere. Yeah. yeah, but no, it's, 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 you learn, you learn. I mean, there's a lot of things I could say about people up there, but as I said, I'm not here to slag people off. There was a lot, I found a lot of people out there, yeah, I met the craze, I knew the craze, I knew this. Now, I've always said this to people, like a lot of people who, who, who a lot of people written books and all proclaimed to be friends with the craze. They all wrote to the craze when they was in prison, boy. Yeah. I never wrote to the craze. They were right. friends of my dad. But yeah. my dad said, son, they was fucking more fucking, more trouble than they was worth. Yeah. But they, my dad used to take the old phone call from him and then he'd change his number. My dad said, oh, they'd phone up with like airbrain schemes and my dad didn't want to be any part of that. Right, but okay. Ronnie, obviously, my dad's friends would visit him and they'd say, oh, Jimmy's son's box, you know, and they'd send me letters and go, oh, like, oh can you come on a visit? And my mum was like, no, you're not visiting them. And they, they listen, yeah. they, they, and all the people up, a lot of Northerners wrote to the craze and they're like, Put, put, oh, I'm friends with the craze because they wrote to him and got a letter from him and went and visited him in jail. All the craze, well, it was a few quid sent to him and, and, and they would use people. Yeah. But and apart from, there's a few people like uh, Joey Powell who actually knew the craze. And so there's, the, I think me, Joey Powell and a, and a few of the, few of the, like you've got Jamie McLean, whose dad knew the craze. Even Lenny used to say, he said, look, f f f f they ain't worth that. Yeah. I think he used to put the phone down on Reg. Really? And yeah, Lenny, Lenny, put, Lenny, Lenny didn't want no part of them. They, they, they were users, the craze. So I'm up there in North, they, they're more, um, they, I know they're a hell of a lot different to the London lot, but is, is the crime sort of up there on the same part? Hull, there was more sort of cigarette, Hull was, there, there was more sort of cigarette smugglers, uh, they dealt with the dirty drugs, you know, like, there was like crack and heroin, where right. in Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds, the, the criminals there are a bit more classy. They, they, they were on par with the Londoners. Because they were classy. More cocaine they, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. They're yeah, they're more top players and they're classy. They live in beautiful houses, got nice cars. In Hull, they, they sort of like, they live in the best council house on the corner of a right. road and, and, and drive yeah. a fucking Ferrari and think they're doing well. They, these people have never lived, never experienced life no, out no. of Hull. They've never, they've never known what it's like to attend with A-list stars or go to string fellas yeah. or, or the top clubs in London or travel like first class nice or, or, go, or go to Marbella yeah. and be like accepted as one of the people and, or go to beautiful... Beautiful, they, these people they wouldn't travel to Benidorm. They, they, their holidays were Benidorm, yeah. where we would go like to the Caribbean as a kids and, and experience a different life. There was different class. It's different class. So you most certainly wouldn't sort of. Uh, you know what? London is very nice watch. London is like a nice watch. Yeah. They were more like Bama, who, could, who could wear the most ounces on a gold chain. Is it, it was, like yeah, that? So it's like Mr. T. Different, well, different class, isn't it? Different class like element. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you, it just didn't suit you or. I, 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 it suited me at that time, boy. But it was the more you get to know people, they, 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 they weren't a bit of me. I, 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 but I made some good friends. There. I'm still friends with to this day. Yeah. But for me, it was a chapter in my life, which yeah. I'm turning the pages, and now I'm in the best chapter of my life. Right. Okay. To this day, I'm in the best chapter of my life. You found your every, path. I yeah. found my path. Every day is amazing, and I've got to thank you guys because obviously I've had the work opportunities which have come my way. Yeah. It's just. They are life changing, and obviously I've told yeah. you a few things off camera which I can't disclose at the moment. But yeah. it's looking like I'll be a household name in in a, in a TV in TV very soon. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, mate. There's and obviously my girlfriend's forwards. got a good part on TV, and it looks yeah. like we're going to be a nice little celebrity couple. Well, we can always come back and do a few more. We've got listen, 100. percent Right, and bombshells going to be coming up. Uh, in yeah, the I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's one. where I can really put the put my put my put my. Uh, that's where you put your mark, David. So I can put my book down. Yeah. Before we sort of go, we, we finish off today. But is there any, anything anything else that went on in Hull um, that you've you know, sort of missed out? It, do you know, Sonny? Do you know, Sonny? We, we, I'll put this out there. We'll see how this goes, and then obviously we can we can come back and touch touch base with a few intimate stories and go a little bit deeper. I think we're just putting this to sort of like, yeah. we're just putting this little trailer out there and letting people know what's about and then we'll see, we'll take it from there. There's going to be a few more oh, stories. Oh yeah, then we'll come back and we'll go a little yeah. bit more, yeah. We'll go a little bit more deeper and deeper. Yeah, we'll go deeper and deeper. I think this is the long, start of a long-term relationship. It could yeah. be, mate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm looking forward to bringing And I love working with liquid bullets, yeah. No, like we really love working with you, Jimmy, because it's always fun, it's brilliant. Thank you. It's, uh, you know, we've had an excellent time. It's a lot of views are doing really well as well. 
Billy, uh, Billy, you Billy, are a Billy character, Vince. mate. You Thank are. You. You, you've got it. You've and got we went well together. We gelled together. Yeah. Well, you got to work. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's what we do. It's what you do. Cool. And we just want to move forward. We want to do well in the in the YouTube world. And Brilliant. obviously, don't forget to subscribe and uh, click the notification Listen, bell. It's the best this. channel. It's the best channel out there. It is, honestly. Yeah. But you've got to remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell because you'll get notified when the next story comes out. You do not want to miss this. Jimmy, thank you very much. God bless. Thank you very soon, Thank you. God bless. Thank you.